Z Church. Pastor will be sharing today, are you exercising your authority? Whatever your platform, leave us a comment. You can do it. I know you can. And after the service, come and join with us for the afterglow. It's going to be an awesome time. Anna, will you pray for us, please? I will call Anna. Anna uh, had a little accident. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for your church. Thank you very much for Sita Church. I declare great, great blessings over Sita Church and that your power will cover every aspect so it will flow uh, uh, seamlessly with no problem and your holy ghost will anoint every part of this service and it will bring great fruit your word will be imparted on our hearts and we will bear great fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Javier. Had a song prepared, but uh, I started thinking about the Lord and how holy he is. He is holy, holy, holy. So we're going to sing Revelation song. Here we go.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Joseph. What an anointed song. Glory to God. You know, there's a particular anointing that is given when people step into the calling of God in reverence and obedience to him. They become a gift given to the body of Christ. Paul pastored supernaturally while he was in jail. Colossians 2 tells us that he said, for even though I'm absent from you in the body, nevertheless, I'm with you in the spirit. Delighted to see the stability of your faith. How could he see that when he was in jail, except by divine revelation? Here at Z Church, we are graced with an ongoing divine connection for which we are so grateful. Would you please give a warm welcome to these wonderful gifts, our pastors, Larry and Loretta Huggins. Woo! Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory. Glory Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, thank you, everybody. Wonderful service, good prayer, prophecy, a wonderful song, wonderful worship. This is a good day, isn't it? Great day in God. What a wonderful day. And thank you, Terry. You know, she just, when she talked about that, uh, Paul uh, pastoring supernaturally, you know, that's that's what we endeavor to do. Isn't that's that right. right? Yes, Pastor. And Thank you uh, so much, Joseph, for following the Holy Spirit. My, my, my. You know, that's what it is. We, we organize ourselves so that we can have a plan, but we're so organized that if the Holy Spirit decides to change, we follow him. That's right. We're, we don't organize God. We organize ourselves to follow God. God. That's right. And then as you Amen. said, there was just such wonderful words of prophecy that went forth, uh, just uh, uh, speaking about wealth, speaking about ability, speaking about giving to God. I took a hold of that abundant wealth one. Oh, yeah. I took a hold of all of them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you know what? You get abundant wealth. But as yeah. another word talked about your mind being, or I'm just going to put a kind of a paraphrase, you being able to 
follow God, you know, a lot of people have wealth, but then they don't have a mind to handle that wealth. That's true. Yeah. So we need that as well. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. Loretta, Amen. I, Absolutely. And I want to greet all of our friends and family on uh, on all the platforms, social media platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram, wherever you may be watching and seeing this. And we love you. We'd love to have you on the Z Church platform. You ought to click on that one day and come be with us, be here on the screen with us so we can see and be seen. But we're glad that you're watching and listening, and we want you to receive the anointing today. Now, before we get started, we have an announcement, and I would like you to give that announcement about Pastor You-Know-Who. Well, I have exciting news Pastor Larry and I, we have been listening to the Lord and we prayed about it. And then we talked with our elders, Elder Joy and Elder Bob, and they were just like, yes. And then uh, we talked with the person that I'm about to announce. And I want you to know that our uh, ministry team has grown with the addition of Pastor Sharon. She is now our associate pastor. That's Isn't right. that wonderful? We have made, she's already been doing the work of an associate pastor for the longest. Let's Amen. just welcome her. Where yes. is she? Someone gives oh, her a, a, a speaker view there. Uh, pastor Sharon. Praise the Lord. I'm here. Thank you so much. I, I so am blessed to be a part of the team. So very blessed. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's so funny because we asked after we prayed with our elders and they were just unanimous and yes, yes. And saying that they knew it in their hearts. And then I spoke with... Um, we spoke with Pastor Sharon right after that and said, you don't have to answer. And she just waited for a moment. You know how sweet she is. She's like very soft. She's like, she walks softly, but carries a big stick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so we said to her, did you, I said, you know, you're a woman of God and you pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, is this a surprise to you? She said, I knew this day was coming. Yeah. <laughs> and then I overheard uh, just because I was passing by and I heard Pastor announcing it to our team just before the huddle. And I think I heard Terry's voice go, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, we'll we'll say this and then we're going to move into her service. But Pastor Sharon is a, is a pastor. She and her husband Ray pastored for many years. And then they both helped Pastor Loretta and me in a church in Danville, uh, California. And I believe that once you're a pastor, you're always a pastor. The gifts and callings are without repentance. And I'll give you an example. I, I met a man one day and I was chatting with him. He was a very nice gentleman and a very elegant man. And I said, uh, oh, what do you do? He said, well, I, I own a couple of uh, copy shops where we do printing and so forth, a couple of franchises. And I said, what'd you do before that? He said, well, I was a general in the Polish uh, army. And a few moments later, I, I referred to him with his name and the title general. He said, no, no, I'm not, a, I'm not a general anymore. And I said, once a general, always a general. He clicked his heels together and gave me one of those quick little bows that Polish officers do. And his face just lit up because it's true uh, once a pastor, always a pastor, once a general, always a general. Praise God. Now, pastor, that's exciting. And we do want you to get into the message. However, we had a special event last well, Saturday. I was going to say something. So thank you for no, bringing please. that up. No. Well, we had our, our miracle event. And wow, uh, we put a lot of work and prayer into it. And, and I'm calling it a win on every level. We had a few technical challenges. Uh, right up to the wire, but I'm telling you, everybody uh, on the Z team pitched in, and I don't think anybody watching noticed that we were having a problem because we got that solved, and we had a great, great event, and what I really liked about it was the fact that so many people on the Z team uh, took part in it, you know, uh, had words, said prayers, uh, worked as a team. It was just great watching them work. Uh, uh, Pastor Joyce said we had a lot of activity on the social media, and she got an additional 50 prayer requests uh, there, plus the ones we had already gotten. So we 
We prayed for people. We had uh, a friend of mine, in fact, was watching, and he was he had broken out with shingles, very painful. Uh, uh, Bill Morris, he and Renee are wonderful people. They're singers. You may have seen them on uh, P, uh, TBN or something like that. They've been around for many years. Great, great psalmist. And while we were praying, he said the fire of God went through his legs and the pain left just like that. And uh, so we're getting testimonies come in of, of things that happened. But that was a great event. It wasn't? was a great event. And just before we go to the ministry, we just had our dear Marianne with us. Yep. And we had the pleasure of meeting Errol. And if Errol, if you're listening, we're expecting you to teach us how to play Go. Yeah. So there. <laughs> yeah, Errol and I have made a pact that we're going to we're going to learn how to use the board game Go and play on uh, online on the computer. Earl's a fine fellow. We we got to meet him in person. In fact, they came to Barcelona to meet It us. was a delight. It really uh, was. Because if this relationship ends up at the altar, um, Pastor Loretta and I get to officiate it. Yeah, I you know. And, but we had to put our stamp of approval. <laughs> yeah, well, we still are going to put him through a trial by fire. He's got to jump through some hooks. And I'll look at his financial and his background check and his CV and all He's that. He's going, oh, God. <laughs> Well, no, we Mary, Ann, Mary Ann's like a daughter to us, so we uh, take it very seriously. And of course, our real daddy is right here. Say hello, Javier. Javier, and uh, you said that uh, Anna Maria had a uh, accident. Is she okay? If if not, let us pray for her. Javier. Uh, yeah, she she uh, got hit by her own cell phone. Uh, uh, we got cats, and one cat jumped, and she. Uh, Try to grab the cat or something, and somehow the cell phone hit her her face, and uh, but not a great deal, but it, it, it bothers. <laughs> well, we'll yes, we can pray so that uh, all the bruise goes go, the bruise goes away quickly. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, and Javier, we're going to pray for uh, Ana Maria, and you know that um, if if Marianne and Earl do get married, it will be in Lima. So that means Pastor Loretta and I must travel to Lima. <laughs> when, amen. Amen. When, let, I will, I will, that one was a little love, slow, Javier, was a little slow. <laughs> yeah, we're going to pray. I would really love it, but I think they're going to marry there in Europe. It will be easier for you. I think. Well, you'll but have to come. Please, well, whatever please, happens. Do come whatever here. Happens. We are waiting okay. for you. Okay. Well, there you have it. We're doing some church business online, but that's what we are as an online church. And uh, we're marrying people. We're not burying any people, but uh, uh, we are taking care of business and we're learning how to do it online. And as Sister Terry said, we're one in the spirit. There's no distance in the spirit. So we're going to pray and the Holy Spirit is going to open your mind and your heart and your understanding and to receive from heaven today. And we're going to make a real connection because though we're absent in the body, we're present in the spirit. Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching, listening, receiving, achieving what you have for us today. I pray, God, that your holy anointing come upon each and every one so that you can communicate wonderful revelations that will empower us to serve you successfully and enjoy your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We see Amen. healing to us. Anna Maria, in Jesus' name, oh, thank amen. You. I I just, I, well, I well, we spoke healing to yeah, it. That's what you said last week, that sometimes amen. we just have to command it. Yeah. Right, Pastor? Well, that's my message today. I'm going to talk about commanding authority. And uh, I'm asking the question, are you using your authority? Now, we have authority. And really, everyone who has a relationship with Jesus, everyone who's been born again, Everyone who's a child of God has authority. And, and believe it or not, we have authority anyway. My mentor, Dr. Lester Summerall, used to say, you can defeat the devil with your birth certificate. And what he meant by that is we have 
uh, this original authority that God gave Adam, which God had purposed to be upon all mankind. And we have a right to claim that authority that God gave to Adam, the progenitor of the human race. Yes. Now, Adam forfeited his kingship and the devil took that title and he declared himself to be the God of this world. Well, he's not my God. He's not your God, but some people have abdicated and they just let the devil run wild and do whatever he wants to. And they complain about it and they go to God and complain about it. You know, Paul did that. He went to God. There was this messenger of Satan that buffeted him over and over. And he went to God and he complained on three different occasions. And God's answer was, my grace is sufficient. In, in other words, uh, Paul, I've already done it. I've already given you authority. He's under your feet, so you do something about it. So, yes, we have an authority that comes from Adam, if we'll claim it. See, we're made in the image of God, and we were created to rule and reign in the earth. More about that in a moment. And then Jesus came along, and he corrected the problem that Adam created, and he's restored unto us this authority. We are kings and priests unto our God. This is a real good place for me to hear an amen. 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 Yes, amen. Well, let me start with a, with a scripture, John 14, 14. Jesus said, if you ask anything, I'm going to emphasize that, anything, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything means anything. And notice he said in my name. Now, you may have heard me address this before, but a lot of people use the name of Jesus as though it were a magic incantation. You know, King's X, yeah. Ali Ali Infree, Abracadabra. No, no. It, it, the, the, the power is not in the name of Jesus. The power is in the word of God and the Holy Ghost. Yes. The authority is in the name of Jesus. Yes. And when you have power and you have the authority to use it, then things happen. Jesus has given us authority, not just to say the word Jesus at the end of our prayer, <laughs> but to speak in his character, in his stead, in his authority, in his position, yes. in his honor. In other words, because we're in Christ, we can talk like Jesus. Amen. God talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you'll, if you'll look at Jesus, he never really asked people to do anything. He used the imperative. Take up your bed and walk. He, he said to the, to the wind and the waves, peace be still. Not pretty please if you feel like it. He said to the fig tree, no man eat fruit of thee henceforth and forever. And he told us that if we would speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed and cast into the sea, that it would obey us. Now that, if you think about a, a mountain, it's mostly rock, right? It's inorganic. It's part of the earth. And then he said, we could say to the fig tree, be thou plucked up and cast in the sea, and it would obey us. We have authority, not just over the, the plants and the animals, but we have authority over the rocks and the mountains as well. Amen. And, and I'm going to get into that. So again, what is the premise today? Are we, I'm going to be inclusive of this, are we really walking in the authority that we have. I have noticed this about myself. Sometimes I'm asking God for things he's already given to me. My Lord. And, and I've noticed that we all do this at one yes. time or another. If you're honest and you think about it, sometimes we're asking God to heal us, for example. Yes. But the scripture says, by his stripes we were healed. So instead of asking God to do what he's already done, what we can do is command our bodies to get well. You know, Jesus said, stretch forth your hand, Hallelujah. take up your bed, 
You know, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He always gave commandments. When he wanted a, a, a donkey, he said, go loose the donkey and bring them to me. If anybody asks you what you're doing, say, the Lord has need of him. Yes. He told his disciples, launch out into the deep. He told them again, cast your nets on the right side of the boat. He never used pretty please, and if you feel like it, and he never begged, he never said, oh God, oh God, oh God, you know, please, please, please let the wind obey me. This waves, these waves are just causing me stress and distress. And look at my disciples, they're bailing the boat and they're looking to me to help. So please, that's not what he did. He was the son of God. He knew who he was. He's the king of kings and kings speak with imperatives. Kings decree a thing. And it comes to pass. Yes. We need to be bold. Oh, we God. need to be bold. The righteous, righteous are as bold as lions. Yes. And they do great exploits. We need to speak the word of God boldly, not timidly. Now, I grew up in a church uh, that I'm thankful for. I went to Sunday school and I learned a lot of things. But there are a few things I had to unlearn. Do you, ever, do you ever have to unlearn anything? Oh, yes. Now, I remember as a child that the pastor every Sunday would call on one of the deacons. And in our church, deacons ran everything. We were, one fellow said we were a deacon possessed church. No. <laughs> and, and he'd call on someone. It was usually an older gentleman. And, uh, and every one of them had this gist. It would start off. Uh, he would start praying, oh, God, and he'd have this, this pathetic tremolo in his voice. And as he prayed, the lights in the sanctuary would dim until it was almost dark. And as a, as a kid, like a nine-year-old kid, I'm thinking, stop praying, or we're not going to be able to find our way out of here. So he'd pray, oh, God, infinite God in the in the heavens, we beseech thee that you would look upon us, the poor wretches that we are, and grant by your tender mercies that we may please, please have the petition that we put before you this day. Wow. There's absolutely no faith in a prayer like that. It sounds good to the religious ear to be so pious and to speak with such eloquence, but that's not how this thing works. Lord. It's like ordering Amen. your dog around. You tell him, get, and he better get, and sit, and he better sit, and you say what you mean and mean what you say, and, and, you, and, and you don't stammer. Praise you God. don't hesitate. Praise you got you go. to speak to the mountain, not ask God to move the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. Speak to the fig tree, not ask God to move the fig tree. He's already given you all the authority that you need to walk in com what what's the word I'm trying to say? To walk in commanding authority like Jesus. Commanding Praise Lord. God. We've got to learn how to do this. It's too easy to fall back into this thing where we're asking God to do something. He's already done. Let me hear an amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Sure is quiet in this Presbyterian church. Oh, God in heaven, I beseech thee that you, in your infinite mercies, would bless us each church today, if it's your will. Is that the church? You're not buying that, are you? Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was the living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. So God calls Jesus the last Adam. Adam, obviously, was the first Adam. Now, now look at some of the things that they have in common. I'm going to kind of skip ahead here and show you something. Let's look at some parallels between Jesus and Adam, the first Adam and the last Adam. The, the first Adam didn't have an earthly father. He had a heavenly father. The heavenly father was the one who created Adam. Yes. Adam was not born of a woman. He was created by God. Jesus did not have an earthly father. 
he had a heavenly father. So the first Adam and the last Adam did not have earthly fathers. They were born from above. Adam had divine life in his blood. He had no sickness in his blood. He had no genetic junk in his blood, no junk DNA. He was pure. He had the life of God in him until he sinned, and then death came into him, and he started dying that day. Jesus had life in his blood. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's why we apply the blood of Jesus that's why we speak about the blood of Jesus and sing about the blood of Jesus, because there's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God, there's authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Adam had fellowship with the Father. He walked and talked with God. He talked, God talked. Adam didn't have to go to school to learn how to talk. Language was innate. It was in there. As soon as God breathed into him, Adam was complete. He had everything he needed to fellowship with God, to walk with God, to talk with God, to hear from God, and to do God's business. And God gave him dominion over this earth. And Jesus, likewise, praise God, had divine life on the inside of him. And he had fellowship with the father. He said, I always do what pleases my father. So Adam had a special relationship with the father one-on-one. -on -one. Jesus has a special relationship with the father one-on-one. -on -one. And now you and I who are in Christ have the same relationship with the father that Jesus does. Jesus said, you got to come through me but you can have a relationship with the Father. I'm the door, and by me, you'll come to the Father. Nobody gets to the Father any other way. You've got to come through me. I'll stop and talk to you. Meditation is a good thing. But if you want to get to the Father in the throne room, you have to go through Jesus. Amen. Being a good person is a great thing. Having good thoughts is a great thing. But you have to go through Jesus. There's yes. not another way to get to the Father. And people try everything except Jesus. Let me tell you something. That is fruitless. The only way to get to the Father is through Jesus. Jesus. Buddha is not going to get you there. Uh, a special vegetarian diet is not going to get you there. Fasting is not going to get you there. Uh, praying repetitious prayers is not going to get you there. Liturgy is not going to get you there. You must be in Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you step into Christ, you are in the throne room. You are at the right hand of Father. You are at the seat of power because you're seated in heavenly places in Christ. Praise God. Praise when God. Jesus walks into the Father's throne room, you and I walk into the Father's yes. throne room. When Jesus sits down at the right hand of the Father, you and I sit down at the right hand of the Father because we're in Jesus. We identify with Jesus. We yes. honor Jesus. Yes. Our lives are hid with Christ in God. Yes. Jesus is the only way now, let me tell you something, uh, theologian, Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you something, religious person, Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you something, agnostic, scientist, philosopher, uh, Jesus is the only way. Amen. Jesus, you can't explain that away. You can't erase that. You can't take that out of the Bible. It is absolute fact. Jesus yes. is the only way. Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for letting Amen. me Amen. letting me do that. Amen. Adam was a king. I'll get to that in a moment. Jesus is the king of kings. Adam had dominion. Jesus has restored dominion to us. Adam separated mankind from God through his disobedience. Jesus has come to unite us with God through his obedience. You see the parallels? Yes. Adam disobeyed God. Jesus obeyed God. Adam brought spiritual death upon humanity. Jesus has brought eternal life, the God kind of life, Amen. to all of those who will accept him and receive him. Adam submitted his will to the devil. Jesus submitted his will to the Father. Not my will, but thy will be done. Adam sold out humanity to sin, and Jesus has redeemed humanity from sin. 
Hallelujah. Praise God for our Redeemer. Hallelujah. Praise God that Jesus Hallelujah. has restored everything that Adam lost. Hallelujah. You know, we, we can't calculate how devastating Adam's disobedience was. But all the evil on the earth, all the pain, suffering, war, sickness, poverty can be traced back to that act of rebellion against God when Adam allowed Satan to take over Adam's authority and to usurp Adam's authority. Adam was called to run the world, actually to run the whole universe. Listen to this. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God said, let us make man in our image. image. Genesis 126. After our likeness, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Plural, right? One God, three manifestations. Let them, let whom? He said, man, mankind started with Adam. Let them, that's you and me, everyone who came after Adam. This is God's original plan for man. It has never changed. It's still his will today. Let them have dominion. That means to rule as a king, to rule over the land and everything that's in it as a king, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. That means the, the mineral world as well. And over every creeping thing. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know that God has set us over all the works of his hands? David yes. said, when I consider the heavens and the stars and the moon which you've created, I ask, what is man that you're mindful of him? And then in the next breath, it says he's called us to, to be over all the works of his hands. Let me tell you something. Yes. Everything in this universe is alive. Rocks are alive. Jesus said, if these people don't, don't praise me, the rocks will cry out and start That's praising right. me. The Bible talks about trees clapping their hands. Uh, there was a, a rock that followed uh, the children of Israel through the desert called the Rock of Meribah, and water came out of that rock. Living rocks. Jesus is a living stone. God created everything, and how can a living God speak a living word and create a dead anything? The hills are alive. The trees are alive. The fish are alive. The planets are alive. They sing. They have names. They have songs. They have numbers. Everything in this universe is alive. In fact, the universe itself is one big living organism, and God put man here to operate under the authority of God and rule over all of God's creation. Yes. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? Yes. It's yes. mind-blowing. Yes. When you think about the original plan, and we have to accept this, we we pride ourselves on being word people. I'm a stickler for the word. Well, honey, the word the word says that you have authority. Yes, yes, yes. And you and I need to step into it. There's a higher place of authority for us to step in, and a higher place than that, and a higher place than that. Praise God. One, one of the reasons I love the gift of faith is because I, 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 when it comes on me, I step over into that place of commanding authority. Yes, yes. Where I, I don't just ask God to do something. I work miracles. I command miracles. I speak miracles. Yes. And that's what we need to get to is the place where we have already asked God God to save us. We've already asked him to redeem us. We've already asked Jesus to come into our lives. Praise God. <laughs> I think I just woke up my phone in there. Uh, the Siri is uh, saying amen along with us. But uh, back to this is, is we've already asked God and he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given us his word. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us his life. He's given us his grace. He's given us his authority, his name, and we need to start using it. People yes, act we like, do. Amen. People act like that God hasn't answered their prayers. Yes, he has. Yes. He yes. has given you his name, and that means 
that you have the same authority. Now, listen to me. I'm just preaching the word here. I'm not making this up. You have the same authority that Adam had in the beginning. That's right. Before the fall. It's been restored through Jesus. You have the same authority that Jesus has. When Jesus was here on this work, earth, he wasn't just operating as the as the you know as an executive in the Godhead by his sovereign power. He was operating as, as an anointed king, a human being who was in the office of a king and anointed to be the king. And when he said, "Peace be still," that was a human being speaking as a king because he was a king. Amen. It wasn't God Amen. speaking because he's God and he can just invent something out of nothing. Jesus was demonstrating how we can do it. Hallelujah. He said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to be with my father. Praise God. Praise Praise God. God. Someone asked him, said, Master, what must we do to work the works of God? Now today, people will tell you, well, you got you to gotta pray more. You got you to gotta pray more. You got to fast a lot. You've got to separate yourself and go to the wilderness and spend time, you know. And people have all these formulas. No, no, no. Jesus answered it. He said, here's what you must do to work the works of God. Believe on him whom God has sent. One step. Believe on Jesus. And actually that word on is a, is a preposition and it literally means into. Believe into Jesus. Praise God. Open the door and step into Jesus and let him think through your mind. And more importantly, let him speak through your mouth because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Now I'm, I'm going I'm so to stop. Here I could go a lot further, but I'm gonna I want to stop here and talk about God brought all the animals before Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever he called them, that was the name thereof. Now that word name in the Hebrew is very interesting. It's the Hebrew word shem, just to translate it shem, and it means a position. It means character. It means honor. It means function. These things that God caused to come before Adam had no assignment. They had potential. It's kind of like the stem cells, you know, undifferentiated cells. There's life in a stem cell, but there's not an assignment. A stem cell can become bone cells. A stem cell can become hair cells. A stem cell can become liver cells. A stem cell can become any kind of a cell because every cell in your body began with a stem cell. A stem cell is a living thing. Yes. yes. And God brought these living things before Adam, but when Adam saw them, they had no function. They had no place in the ecology of the universe and God waited to see what Adam would call them. He would classify them. He would give them instructions. He would give them an assignment. And whatever he called them, that's what they were. Imagine that. God did not interfere with Adam when Adam stepped over into this dominion. God waited to see what would happen. God had already given him the authority. He had already breathed life into him. He was fellowshipping with him. Adam was in contact with God. He had the mind of God. He was doing the will of God. He was in his place of authority. And God said, now this is my son. I've created him in my image. Now I'm going to see what he's going to do with the authority that I've given him. And let me tell you where how a lion became a lion. because. Adam gave those undifferentiated creatures an assignment. And for this creature, he said, you are a lion and you're going to roar. And he gave the fish an assignment and said, you're going to swim in the sea. And he gave the birds an assignment. He said, you're going to fly in the air. And he gave an assignment to everything, the sun, the moon, the stars. I know it's mind blowing. What is man that you're mindful of him? You've made him a shade lower than Elohim, the master creator, crowned him with glory and honor and set him over all the works, the works of your hands. Hallelujah. That's a good praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is good. Amen.
We need to learn how to give names to things. Praise God. Here's the name I'm going to call you. Rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mr. and Mrs. Rich. I take yeah. it. Take it. I call you wealthy. I call you prosperous. Not going to get prosperous. I call you prosperous. Hallelujah. I call you healed. Yes. Praise God. I don't call you sick. I know it gets tricky here because, you know, we have to talk about things. And so it's so easy to say, well, uh, you know, my arthritis, my bursitis, my colonitis, my migraines, my cancer, my this, and we personalize it and we ascribe that name to ourselves and we say, I am sick. I am not well. And it's hard to get this tongue to change and start speaking with authority. By his stripes, I am healed. If I am healed, I'm not sick. If I'm not sick, I'm well. Praise God. Praise How are God. you doing? Hallelujah. It is well with my soul. It Praise God. How are you soul. doing? I'm, I'm blessed in getting more blessed. How are you doing? I'm wonderful in getting more wonderful. How are you? I, 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 I'm, I'm just terrific and I'm getting better every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm young, I'm strong, I'm wise, I'm smart, I'm righteous. Praise God. Let us not put a question mark where God has put a period. Now, we all have our own style and way of talking so that we can respond to people without sounding like fanatics, without scaring them away. But we need to learn how to speak the truth in love. Yes, yes, yes. And say what we mean and mean what we say. Yes. And when we say, I can do all things through Christ, we need to believe that. When we say, I am healed, that doesn't mean one day in the sweet by and by. It means we, we take it and we behave ourselves as though it's ours and we have it now. And that's why I'm saying we need to stand in the authority because every single one of us have have kind of backslidden yeah. into this thing where we talk like mere unchanged human beings. We talk like sinners. We talk like unbelievers. We have the same vocabulary they do. Talk about the same woe and dread and doom and gloom and end time blues and economic blues and political blues. Well, there's got to be a difference between the way we talk and the way they talk. When, when people listen to Jesus and they said, never a man spoke like this. He speaks with authority, not as the scribes, not as the people who just repeat the stuff, but as someone who, who believes what he's saying. Yes. Well, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And Jesus always spoke the truth. And you and I are created in the image of God. And Jesus has redeemed us and brought us back into that fellowship with God. And now God is waiting to see what we will name things. Praise God. And notice it says, whatever he called them, that's what it was. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to sound negative, but it's going to be positive, so hang with me. That original authority that Adam had is still working in every human being on this planet, but it's perverted. They still have power in their tongues. They still have Adamic authority. They're made out of the earth. They have a right to be on the earth. And God's original plan for man was to rule over the earth. And people are using their tongues, but instead of blessing, they're cursing. And so many bad things that come in, in, in this world is because there's bitter water coming out of people's wells. Wow. Wow. There's there's poison coming out of their mouths. They're 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 cursing their own country. They're cursing their own government. They're cursing their own family. They're cursing the their workplace and where they work. They're cursing uh, the the employers. Uh, we need to learn how to bless and not curse because there's power in the tongue. 
Hallelujah. This is true. There's Amen. power in the tongue. Praise God. Praise God. You're going to have what you say one way or another. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You're going to have what you say one way or another. Praise God. Praise God. So here's the question. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and we're going to eat the fruit of it. What fruit do you want to eat? Poisonous fruit or blessed fruit? Blessed fruit. You're going to drink from, from the, that well one way or another. Is it going to be bitter water? Is it going to be sweet water? Sweet waters. This, this thing about Adam is still working. It's working in the life of sinners, atheists, unbelievers, demagogues, criminals, politicians. It's working in all of them. And you don't have to be a genius or run a big uh, survey to, to find out how much negativity is being spoken into the world. Just open your ears. Well, let me tell you something. It starts with you and it starts with me. And we have, a, we have an obligation to our family, our loved ones, to ourselves, and most of all, to God. To put the right name on things. Yes. God is waiting to hear what we call things. Yes. And what are we called? And that's what they are. You know, the, Jesus is the high priest of our profession. Yes. That word means confession. So if we're speaking the word, then he communicates that. He passes it along to the Father. If we're speaking the good word of God, praise the Lord. So let's make sure that what we're doing is speaking the word, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I, 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 I've, yeah. I've excited myself. I've turned myself <laughs> on here. Praise God. I call you blessed. I call you prosperous. I call you filled with peace. I call you filled with love. Yes. I, I call you more than a conqueror through Christ. Yes. I, I, I call you healthy. Healthy. Wealthy. Wealthy. Wise. Wise. Hallelujah. Large you know, and in charge. Large and in charge. You know, the we call our Z team the amazing Z team. And, and I do that deliberately on purpose. And and it's caught on from day one. We haven't just been a group of volunteers. We have been the amazing Z team. And I've watched that come to pass. I've watched people do amazing things. I've seen amazing growth. I've seen amazing responsibility. I've seen amazing words and amazing deeds and amazing blogs and amazing videos. You are amazing. And Pastor Loretta and I speak good things over you. Every day. Yes, we do. Amen. Praise God. Well, Pastor, I call you blessed. Huh? I call you to head and not to tell. But the fact is that you are blessed. And whatever you set your hand to is blessed. It prospers. Well, there you go. See see how blessed I am? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You might want to say something, Pastor. Uh, you know, it's interesting because for the last couple of days, I've been thinking about when God uh, told out Adam to uh, name the different things. And it was based on, I was watching this YouTube and they were talking about different things and they showed about uh, cows and someone made a, a, a comment about, so how did someone know to milk a cow? And I started thinking about that and I thought, well, of course they knew because Adam had put that information, that that information ha was out the minute Adam spoke it. It's out there. We may have lost it. We may have not. But the fact is that it's out there. It's out there. And one more thing, Pastor. Take your time. One more thing. You know, people are perhaps this might be new to some people about this authority. And might even be new to those who have received Christ and have lived uh acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, the reason why it's still working, you said it, the authority is still working. Adam lost everything except his right to choose. Yeah, that's, that's uh, profound. If you think about that, he lost everything, but his right to choose. And the Bible tells us he's set before us, God has set before us death and life. And then he coaches us and he says, Choose life. Amen. I mean, you think about it. 
He lost his authority. He lost his position. He lost everything when he turned and did not obey God. Yet, out of everything that he lost, <clears throat> excuse me, he did not lose his right to choose. If he lost his right to choose, then we couldn't choose Christ. That's right. We still have a will, and we have we have a choice every day. We make many many choices, uh, and and you know humans we're we're interesting. You know, <laughs> excuse me, must be very interesting from God's perspective because we choose all these things. We choose to believe evil reports. We choose to believe the worst about this and that and, and uh, you know that we've got this problem we magnify the problem and then we go to God and ask him to remove it and it's like he's saying well you chose it uh, that was a choice you made but he's merciful <laughs> thank God he's merciful but uh, really, really, we're, we're, we're living by the fruit of our lips so we're going to be bold and I want us as a as a team and I want to talk to you all all of you who are at uh, you know, listening and watching by social media, let's make up our minds to use our authority. Now, we grow in it. We, you know, it's just like a child developing from an infant to maybe to a toddler to adolescent and so forth. We grow in grace. Yes, amen. And a knowledge of the truth. <laughs> let's take this very seriously. We were placed in this world to rule and reign in life by one Christ Jesus. And, and let's uh, comport ourselves like the kings That's a good we are. Word, comport. Yeah, like the kings we are. Well, enough said. We want to pray for you. And, um, and I'm very happy to see that Sabrina has joined us. You know, praise God. So we just thank God. We, you know, she had been just standing and standing. Mm -hmm. So we just support her and yeah, just say, speak the word only, speak Sabrina. The word, speak the word Amen. only. We're speaking it over you. Yeah, we call you blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen. We call you healed and blessed. Amen. Well, um, I want to talk to everyone who's listening to me. If you're if you're not a believer, if you're not a Christian, if you haven't been born again, that's step number one is that no one comes to the Father except by Jesus. And that's so easy to take care of. You're one prayer away from activating that promise. God says, we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We're going to be saved. Very simple. Believe in your heart, say it with your mouth. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want everyone on Z team to say this. It's all right to repeat this prayer. It just reaffirms what we know is true. <clears throat> Let's say it together. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father. Heavenly Father. I want to come to you. I want to, I want to, come, to come to you. I'll do it the way you said to do it. I'll do, I'll do it the, the way, way you said, you said to, do to do it. I'll come through Jesus. I'll come, I'll come through, through Jesus. Jesus. You are the door. Jesus, you are the door. Jesus, you are the door. I'm coming in. I'm coming, I'm coming in, in. Coming into you. I'm coming, I'm coming in into you. You are my access to the Father. You, you are, are my access, access to the Father. To the Father. I believe in my heart that you are Lord. I believe, I in, believe my in my heart, heart that you are Lord. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. I confess, I confess, with, confess with, with my mouth that you are my Lord. My Lord. My Lord. And according to your word, I am saved. And according, and according to your word, word, I am saved. saved. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, uh, let us know. We want to help you with your spiritual journey. Write us at info at zchurch.life. We're going to have communion today, and we invite all of our friends to have communion with us. We like to have communion every time we speak the word. It's a way of for us to kind of confirming and ratifying what we've done and sealing what we've done. Praise God. So we have communion. We don't have the luxury of laying hands on people because obviously we're online. But healing and miracles are communi communicated through the communion cup, through the bread and the wine. So when we have communion, right then... You accept the anointing of God right then. You you latch a hold of your miracle, of your blessing. It's guaranteed 
by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And today, our pastor Sharon is going to lead us in communion. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a great message, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, Uh, you know something? I think we've lost Pastor Sharon. Yeah, so Elder but Bob is to take over? Or I'm going to, Elder Bob. He's got plenty to do there. Yeah, Elder Bob. I'm always speaking on you. Um, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take it. This is my body that was broken for you. As often as you do this, do this for me. Uh, last week, Chris talked about we're all part of the same loaf. And this represents that we're all in the body of Christ together. So Jesus bore stripes in his body, wounds in his body. He carried disease in his body. He was broken so that we can behold. We do this in remembrance of him. Healing is the children's bread. And likewise, he lifted the cup and after it supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And that's why I said, we like to seal what we're doing, seal the deal by partaking of the cup of blessings, the blood of Jesus, which ratifies everything. The blood is on the mercy seat, the blood of the lamb right now. And we have the privilege of celebrating Christ's victory through this cup. And once this passes our lips, all those promises that we talked about are activated. The life of all flesh is in the blood. The bread represents the flesh. The blood is the life. Let's drink together. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh, the blood of Jesus, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, Jesus. It was Thank you, Pastor Loretta. We're going to move right into a time of worshiping God with their tithes and offerings. There'll be a, a link to our giving page cchurch.life forward slash give. It'll be in the chat. And we want to encourage you to participate. If you have tithes and offerings, uh, our head deacon Steve is going to lead us in our time of giving. Let's pay attention to what the Lord has given him for us. Thank you, Pastor. Um, uh, thank you, Pastor, for the wonderful message. And uh, let's move on to our tithe and offering time. Today's Titan verse comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to go ahead and read both the King James Version and the New Living Translation. He goes, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. With the New Living Translation, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. And he will fill your barns with grain and your vat overflow with good wine. Now, this is one of the few cases in the Bible where it says, if you do this, then that will happen. For example, in uh, Ten Commandments, honor your parents for your days will be long. Or, um, or yes, or there's a very similar verse, uh, and like such as seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Or Malachi 3.10, you bring your tithe to the storehouse and he will be able to open the windows of heaven. Um, this week, the Holy Spirit reminded me that King David never saw the righteous begging for bread because God protected and provided provided the people that followed him and his way, including tithing. So make a decision to honor him with your wealth, no matter what, and he will protect and provide for you. And I'm speaking from experience. The giving information 
on glitchers.live as well as the links from the social media that you're seeing right now. God bless you as you give. Praise God. I'm back. <laughs> I do have a few announcements uh, for you, but I can I read the scripture I was going to read during communion? It's so good. Sure. Okay. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 20 to 21 from The Voice. And it says, so we are now representatives of the anointed one, the liberating king. God has given us a charge to carry through our lives, urging all people on behalf of the anointed to become reconciled to the creator God. He orchestrated this. The anointed one who had never experienced sin became sin for us so that in him we might embody the very righteousness of God. I just thought that was such a great translation of that verse. Praise God. Amen. The liberating king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me give these announcements. Uh, we encourage you to visit our website, zchurch.life. You'll find the Z Church blog and all our past services there, and they'll encourage you in your walk of faith. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll also find the Zoom links for our Zoe group meetings. You can contact us on the website if you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team. There are many opportunities available and there's a place for you. And I really want to put a plug in here for Z Church. Um, if you aren't uh, connected with the church, this is the church to get connected to. There is such a blessing to be uh, under the authority of submitted pastors and the prophet of God and a loving and fi like faith team here. Uh, you can't go wrong if, if you join us. Amen. We also encourage you to join Pastor Larry on his Your Good Life devotional on Facebook at 7 a.m. Pacific Time weekdays. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Joseph. On Zoom, if you'd like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. And if you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We'd also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now it's time for the afterglow. Joseph. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Hey, man. Is there a hey, Bob? Is there a video today or no? I don't see it. No, no, video. no video today. You're uh, awesome. entertaining enough. Beautiful. Great. Okay. So I want to welcome everyone to the afterglow. So nice to see your faces, everybody. Um, one thing I wanted to share was when Pastor was uh preaching i i heard in my spirit i heard dream big 
All your dreams are contained within me because none of your thoughts or words can escape my ears. That's, that's, I just heard that in my spirit and that's, that's what I heard. Thank God. <laughs> uh, gosh. That's good. One day I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have like paragraphs like Christine can have, you know, like no. <laughs> I had a sentence right there. <laughs> It'll probably be a song knowing you. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I haven't written a song in a long time, but uh, it's just, that's how I started off. But uh, yeah, blogs are a lot easier, I think, because you don't have to worry about music <laughs> or making it fit into this little you know, clever phrase. So anyway, um, does anybody have anything they want to share? I mean, the, the, the miracle event was amazing. You, you despite any little technical difficulties we had, yeah, it went, and, I felt like you it went, did, you, uh, you carried a lot of it, Joseph. Thank you so much for being there for the whole thing. It was just great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to sing. There, uh, you know, oh, like even this morning, I had that one song prepared, and you know, I just some day, sometimes it's you just got to follow the Holy Spirit, and that's you can prepare something, but that's not the. the I'll hear something from one of uh, in pre prayer, and I'll, I'll like, oh, oh, okay, that's the Holy Spirit. I need to, I need to sing that song right there. I was actually gonna sing Victory Chant because, because, uh, uh. Uh, Maria, your 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 prayer. You said vic- victory, and I was like, "Ooh, victory chant! Let's go!" But I was, I was. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I saw the sixth wing seraphim. I don't know. Then I heard "Holy, Holy, Holy," and I said, "Okay, Revelation song. Let's do it." There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was a good song. That was the right one. <laughs> All right, Terry. I see your hand up, Terry. I just want to welcome Kathy Blunk. Oh yeah. Hi, Kathy. Uh, Would you unmute yourself and talk to us? Where are you from? It's good to have you. Praise God. I'm from uh, Lake Isabella, California. Okay. 50 miles east of Bakersfield. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let me do Hi, Kathy. I'm very familiar with Lake Isabella. And I think that. A lot of the pictures you see of the Martian rover taking pictures of the planet Mars, it's really just <laughs> running around Lake Isabella. <laughs> I am funny. also a friend uh, of um, Gail Gallimore. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we Gail is a, a part of what we're doing now. Uh, she's not with us today, but we're glad you're here. Yeah. You're up in God's country. Yes. God's country. Uh, Amen. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to I'm going to ask you uh, something, Kathy. Yes. Have you been to Trona? Trona? Uh not really. <laughs> it's uh it's near Ridgecrest. You've been to Ridgecrest probably. Yes, I have several times. Okay, well Ridgecrest is on a, a dry lake. It's like a salt flat. And they, if you ever saw a 20 mule team borax with, 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 uh, I can hardly hear you. Oh, okay. If you ever saw a 20 mule team borax with uh, Ronald Reagan as the host, had all these mules, um, 20 mules pulling a, a big wagon yeah. full of borax. Right. Yeah, that came out of that dry lake. They still mine it, and there's a little mining town. It's probably got 50 people in it. I'm I'm not exaggerating, and everything is white because of this borax. It's a very ghostly looking place. And Kenneth Pagan preached there in Trona, California, years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think about that. You know, this you know, we always thought of Kenneth Hagin going to these big cities and these big venues but before anybody knew who he was he was traveling all over the country in his uh, in his old car preaching the same message yeah you can have what you say and uh, one of his friends was one of his church members in uh, in Texas 
And uh, this old timer came up to me and he said, yeah, he said, I've known Kenneth Hagin for years and years. And he said, he always preached the same thing. He said, we thought he was a little crazy. He'd pull up out front and he had this old car that was, uh, the tires were worn out and smoke came out of the back and it made funny noises. He said it was just a junker, really. And he'd say, well, you folks want to ride to church with me? And they'd say, no, Brother Hagin, you better ride with us. I don't think that car is going to make it much farther. And he said, Brother Hagin, get in our car. And he said he would he would put his hand in his pocket and shake his pocket to make some noise because he oftentimes all he'd have is a dime and a pocket knife. And he'd try to act like he had money in his pocket. And he'd say, you know, you can have Cadillac faith or you can have Chevrolet faith. And he said, we thought he was crazy. He was driving this old clunker and he's talking about having Cadillac faith. But what I got out of that was Burhagen was speaking the word when there wasn't a lot of evidence in his life that the word was working for him. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I remember Hagen's coming up to Lake Isabella preaching Sister Edge's church. Yeah, I, you know, I preached up at Lake Isabella and Ridgecrest and uh, Mojave and all up in there. Oh, yeah. Um, I've Probably everywhere that Kenneth Hagen went, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember the Baptist didn't like you, Huggins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember, Kathy, but uh, at the church in Lake Isabella, there was a a woman. When I went there, she was 107, I think. Kathy, does that sound right? She's really old. Yes, yes, and she yes. She came up to me, and, and I think the average age of that church was like 75, and it's because this lady blew the curve, you know. <laughs> and uh, she came up, and she patted my hand, and she kissed it. And she said, oh, that was good preaching. That was that was good preaching. I said, well, thank you very much. And I said, you know, they tell me that uh, you're 107. She said, yeah, I'm 107. I said, well, I guess that makes you the oldest person in Lake Isabella. She said, no, but I've got the best mind. <laughs> she was 110. <laughs> 110. Wow. 110. Yeah. Well, it pays to serve God. She was Indian. Was she? Yeah. Was she? Uh, like, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the people on the Kern River there? Uh, trying to think of the name of those. Uh, the tribe? Yeah, that occupied the Kern River up in, up in that area. I don't remember. I yeah, don't remember. I've been to the reservation up there. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably think of it in the middle of the night and I'll send you a text. Yeah, I, remember. <laughs> I remember that. I remember her coming up and giving you a big hug. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, uh, Steve, I didn't mean to take over your thing here. But that's, <laughs> no worries. That's what, past, that's what pastors hey. do. Of course. That's we're, what they're supposed to do. We're, we're all <laughs> sharing. We're all sharing. Is anybody, um, I don't see any hands up. Oh, there we go. Sabrina, go ahead. Well, I just want you to know, this is an amazing message. Um, I have um, grown up, you know, in faith and know about the authority of Christ and, and have spoken it. And I was really baffled because when I started this journey that I started seven years ago, it was as if. I, whatever I learned was nothing. It was almost as if my situation laughed at what I knew. And I was struggling with that. I mean, for many years, cause you know, I know about speaking the word and, and I would get so much to where the pain and even to, you know, sometimes it gets so much to where the pain gets, it speaks louder than what you know. And yeah. the pastor answered it. He said, you grow in your authority. It, you know, you have to grow in it. And mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing this last couple of years. I've been scrambling to grow, to catch up to my situation so that I can speak with the authority to be above it. And because I, I, I didn't understand what was wrong with me. 
<laughs> until he spoke when he till he preached when he preached today. And I got it. Oh, I just have to keep growing, you know, um, yeah, just keep growing with it and keep getting more and more authority um, as I speak. And um, and I just really want to say you all have been um, a you, you all have been amazing to me because in this journey, if I I think that I'm connected with you all because you speak with such authority. So when I am at my weakest point, which I just had a really weak moment the last week, just just really hard. Listening to you all on YouTube (laughs) speak with authority, Christine and and um, and hearing Terry and just all of you all just reading your things, the authority that is there has really encouraged me. And I just want to say, even when you don't know your 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 helping, you're helping. So don't stop, you know, as what, um, whatever the word was, open that door, kick it open because you're helping and you have helped me. And I appreciate it because I really believe I am alive today because I have rode on your backs until I could get to where I need to be in that are authority you again. To this Z team, you are making a difference. Amen. Yes. Such a blessing, Sabrina. Sabrina, that's how it works. You know, we pray for one another. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's easier to pray for the other person than it is for us to pray for ourselves because of those symptoms and pain and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's really good to be in the body. We minister to one another in love. Thanks for sharing that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sabrina. And I'm just going to be real here. Sometimes um, I speak with with authority and faith and I sing with authority and faith. And there are sometimes, and I've been through a lot of things that I've conquered. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, Lord, I'm cool. Like, I'm, I'm cool right here. <laughs> and I know, I know there's more faith, but I just know that that's going to come with more challenges. <laughs> so, so I was, I was just, it's funny. I, I'll, I'll think about it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay right here, but you know, you can't control what's going to come at you. And so just like, um, I forgot who said it. It might've been you, Pastor, Pastor Larry, that you can't, you can't stop the snake from biting you, but you can keep it from, you can keep the poison from, uh, going around your body by like, you know, putting a little tourniquet on it. I think I heard you say that one time. So oh, that's close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know uh, when we talk about this uh, faith's confession and authority, it it's kind of a fine line we have to walk because we want to stay in faith. We want to be positive, but then you know, we're not denying things. We're just denying their right to exist in our lives. Right. And some people are like deniers. You know, they uh, there is no coronavirus. There, you know, there is no inflation, whatever. <laughs> and Brother Copeland helped me when he made a statement. He said, we're not denying that we have symptoms in our bodies, for example. We're denying that those symptoms have a right to stay in our bodies. Amen. 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 And so, you, you know, we have to order our conversation or right. And mm-hmm. that's a skill that we learn because I said earlier, we don't want to come across as the lunatic fringe when, you know, our family and friends are talking to us. And it's easy to come across that way. So, one of the secrets I've found is just don't talk about it. Wow. You know, if somebody asks you something, just deflect it as soon as possible and say, oh, yeah, that's everything's super and just change the subject. Because if we stay on that subject long enough, they're going to ask us for more information. And, you know, and some people won't even believe you when you tell them that you're well, you're healed, bias stops, I'm healed. Well, I knew somebody that had the same thing you got, and they died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to share more? Or should I go start calling everybody? Uh... <laughs> 
All right, Luis, go ahead. Can I ask Pastor Larry a question? Yeah, please do. Pastor Larry, for what you just said, I have a difficult thing that I need to know how to better deal with. Um, I know if I pray, God will give me the right avenue. But I have a, a thing. For instance, when I had an abscess on my face, um, I asked God, if you want me to go to the doctor, to the hospital, I'll go. But you know, I don't have any money and I don't have any medical insurance or whatever at the time um, for, for dental or anything like that. And I said, you are my dentist, right? I said, you've always been my doctor. I said, I believe you can do dentistry too. But I've never went that way with him. So I just said, if you tell me I don't have to go to the hospital, then I, I'll be sure I know what to do. But I need to know what to do. And I realized I was going back and forth. And I stopped myself and said, if I keep worrying about the lady at work who had her face cut to get the pus out of her face, because she almost died, they said. And well, that's the way it was projected, but we saw how bad she was. I mean, she was full-blown, whatever. And the workplace would not give her any leave to go to the doctors. So, what's the question, Louise? Oh, sorry. My question is, um, knowing I have my face like that, I had to go to church. And I went to church one day and I, I have long hair, so I kind of had my hair all down in my face and my eye was all blown up. My face was all blown up. And I said, Father God, I said, I need your help because you know I'll blessed with the word of God. Somebody starts talking to you. Oh, what's wrong with your face? And what's wrong with your eye? And oh, are you sick? And oh, you're gonna go to the doctor and you you you're gonna go, you know, we know somebody who had this and and they almost died and then oh they died or, or this is what happened. And so when people do that, it kind of really annoys me and I just start. Uh, I'm the type I'll start blasting with the word of God and I'll say in the name of Jesus. I cancel every word that just came out of your mouth. I mean, I'll directly <laughs> blast them right there in front of their face. I said, you're so, you know, they're supposed to be a Christian and know God and know the word. And I heard just in the name of Jesus, I shall live and not die in my face. There's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. And, you know, and I'll start speaking scriptures. Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. If he took them, I don't have, and I will blast them with healing scriptures until they shut up. Um, that may not be the best way to do things. So that sounds fine to me. Um, yeah. You know, and, and you can always say, and this is true, you can say, well, uh, I'm going to the best doctor in the world. I'm under the care of the best physician in the world. And he's pres I'm, I'm going through therapy right now, and he has prescribed a miracle treatment for me. Wow. <laughs> so that, that physician is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it, then if people want to push it, that'll probably satisfy most of them. And if they want to push you, you can just say, listen, um, I believe in divine healing. And um, by his stripes, I was healed. You know what you just said. But that's what I mean. You know, it's when we're dealing with friends and family, it's it's hard to communicate without either coming off sounding like we're fanatics or without offending someone. You know what you just said. Well, but then again, I'm, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be true to the word of God. You know, we, I don't we, quite do it as nice as you, Pastor. I just go out with a pow. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that's who you are. So you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's good. Well, I've felt condemned a few times because I thought maybe I was really bad for doing that. <laughs> Well, listen, it's, now, it's uh, Joseph, is, Joseph is going to carry this afterglow the whole way here, but I'm going to sign off. Pastor Loretta has made us reservations, and we have to go claim our table before we lose it. So 
you know how this works. Uh, it's uh, it's later here in Barcelona than it is there. So it's yeah. uh, I love you. I'm very happy with the uh, with the miracle day. I call that a win on every area. And the next one will be better. Yeah. I'm thrilled Man. about Pastor Sharon. As, as you can see, yeah. there's already been a change. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, we're looking forward to what's going ahead. Bob, thank you for jumping in, in last night and, and uh, taking care of the website. I don't know if the team knows this, but we had uh, the, the website kind of locked up on us. And uh, Bob was right there on it. I think Terry is the first one that brought it to our attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it really blesses me that we have a team that takes charge. You, you know, you just, uh, you're self motivated. That's that's amazing. I I don't want to be a micromanager. I'd rather you. I'm like Jesus. I'm like God. I'm going to sit back and see how you handle this. Yeah. <laughs> you all are amazing, and I appreciate you all. Amen. Yeah, it's amazing. Pastors, yeah. we love you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah. Adios. Thank you. <laughs> Maria, did you have your hand up? I thought I saw your well, hand up. I, I had a question for Pastor, but I'm letting him go. Oh, no. to... I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. You I'm don't have here. to. It's okay. I'm still here. I, I just wanted um, some summary of between. I understand the difference between faith and denial. Yeah. But how do you distinguish between faith and presumption? Yeah, that's, you know, that's where most people have a problem, and, and we all do. That's that fine line that I'm talking about. It's a straight and narrow line. Um, I have a friend of mine who uh, Pastor Sharon knows. He's in heaven right now, but he wrote a song. Doyle Tucker wrote a song. The word is working mightily in me. No matter what circumstances, what I feel or see, the word of God is working mightily in me. So we we don't go by feelings. We go by the word of God. And that's not denial. You know, we're not saying we're not sick. We're not in pain. We're, we, we're not saying I don't have a problem. What we're saying is by his stripes, I was healed. <laughs> Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So rather than us expressing our feelings or trying to ex trying to explain everything that's happening, we just need a word to hang on to. Amen. Amen. Make sure that we have a we have a promise that covers everything we're dealing with. Okay. Man. Amen. I gotta go. I love you. If that didn't answer your question, ask Bob. He's a <laughs> ask Pastor that's, Sharon. Yeah. That's what she's for. To take okay. all the <laughs> bye bye everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Love you all. Bye, Chris. I'm Absolutely. Oh, uh, absolutely. I, I would love to to hear from from Bob and Pastor about that, and Pastor Sharon. Sure. Or, or, or what aspect that wasn't covered. Uh, of of the difference between faith and presumption, assuming that something is happening or it will happen. Can I, I say this? Um, is it okay, Bob, if I say oh, this real quick? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I think presumption sometimes, uh, we don't think of it as presumption. But I think there are times when the word, we're in mental ascent with the word, and then there's, there's the time the word is in our spirit, in power. And we have to d discern ourselves when there's that drop. And, and I think at times people can be in mental ascent, and that's when they get disappointed, they can't hold on, they, they aren't able to, um, you know, they're, they're agreeing with the word, but the belief, the strong belief in it, in their heart, may not have, it just may not have sunk in deep there. Does that make sense? Where there's a distinct difference between 
being in agreement. We're all in agreement about the word as being the word of God, excuse me. But there is a point when that word drops into your spirit and you know that you know that you know that you are healed and you know yes. that you know that you know you are saved and you yes. know it. Amen. Yes. Sabrina, you know it. Yes. It's a drop. You feel it. Yes. It's, it's a tangible experience where the word of God is quickened and it quickens your mortal body and it quickens your spirit. And, and it's a real experience. So I, I, I don't know if that really answered your question, uh, Maria, but I do think there that mental ascent can hook, can cause people to um, assume that they are in faith completely without digging into the word and getting it deep. Okay. Can I, Amen. can I add something? Cause Sharon just yeah. spoke. She, okay. I've seen a lot of people die in my situation, people that were not as bad as me. And the reason they died is because they were in mental ascent. When you know you're healed, no matter what happens, no matter what pain, or, you know, you're, you, you believe the word, no matter what they say, what rises out of you is faith. Mm. It, you can be in extreme pain. I've had to wear my parts of my body actually fell asleep and they were saying, we're going to have to do this. I didn't even have to do much of anything. I just said, well, I'm healed. And that was it. And I was healed because I knew it. And that's the difference, you know, because I've walked in both. The difference is no matter what it is, it's settled for you. I mean, I don't care if I, if it takes seven more years of me going through this pain, I I know I'm healed. I'm already making plans for the healing, but when it, when it walks out, because I know it's going to happen and that that's the difference that I've walked out, that it just doesn't matter what they say or what you see, you know, what the word is true and it gives you a peace to walk through it, you know? Amen. Get it? Amen. I say Chris ready. Yeah. And and while I'm I'm still believing to get to the level of faith that, that Sabrina is at, um, I'll agree with what, what Pastor Sharon said as I was pondering it. I think the biggest difference for me between mental ascent and real faith is, is how aggressive and assertive and determined are you. That's what Pastor preached today. Real uh, authority demands and commands. It doesn't just wait for something to happen. And too often mental ascent is saying, yes, I mentally assent to the fact that with the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. And and in God's time, when he wants me to be healed, I will be healed. And then we wait for something to happen. Whereas faith is that thing that pushes you over the edge and says, no, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to make something happen. And I'm going to take my authority and speak to this thing. And I'll say for Sabrina's sake, if if that's got to be for 10 or 20 years, before I see something happen. I I had issues in my life after some time in the world where I knew I had issues and was praying about it. And it took like 10 years before I saw anything change. And another 10 years before I saw everything change. And I didn't see any one point where everything just changed. But by golly, at times I'm going to get into prayer and into the place of faith where I start to speak by faith and authority until something happens. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Yes. Okay. Go, Chris. And I'll get to you, Lois. Go ahead, Chris. That's that's right. Yeah. I mean, Pastor Sharon was um, right on uh, with that mental ascent and um, walking walking by faith. And there's a distinct difference between the two. Um, You can go to church and you can listen to sermons. But if you're not spending time in the word, you'll you'll only be walking in mental ascent. Uh, The word says... Um, hearing, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And this is, this is, and I remember, um, Charles Capp saying, God has given to every man the measure of faith. And he says, that's the word of God. We all have the same measure of faith. And this is where faith comes from. It's, a, it, 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 this is our fountain of faith. And, uh, the more time you, you, you spend here in the word, faith just keeps coming and it keeps coming. It comes from nowhere else. Right? It, 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 you can listen to sermons and go to church, but if you're not spending time in the word, faith will not come to you. God speaks um, directly to you through his word. And um, 
and, and the more time you spend in the word, and I've been spending a lot more time in the word recently than I used to. And I, my faith is just really starting to, 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 to grow. Right. Um, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is our fountain of faith. This is our supply. This is our full supply of faith. And it won't come from anywhere else. So, um, and, and we, you know, we have to, we have to walk by faith, not by mental assent. We can't just agree with the sermon and say, yeah, that's right. I believe that. And therefore I'm, I'm healed. Right. No, you, the word will speak to you. The word will speak to you. So. Amen. Amen. Lois, go ahead. Louise. To, to go back on what Bob said, to enhance more what he said and what Chris just said, but with more with, uh, not with so many words, but with example, a concrete example. Rick Renner has a video that he shared about how he had this allergy problem. He said it was so bad, he would just swell up. It was really bad. And he's supposed to be a man of faith, word of God, whatever. But he said he had to go to the doctor. They gave him a prescription and he started taking this prescription to help him. And he said, you know, he was speaking some scripture and whatever, but things weren't turning out like they should be. And he didn't want to take forever and a long time. So he doubled up on his dose. He did like healing scriptures for two hours a day. Instead of one hour, he upped it to two hours a day speaking healing scriptures. And he was fervent and ever with it until it. And he said. It wasn't enough to just speak healing scriptures. He said he had to really meditate and, and absorb that word in him to where it became finally one day it became rhema word. It became revelation with faith. Like Chris said, it had to be not just words, but real faith came to him and to where he actually believed it and he said the more he kept doing it and he did it faithfully every day little by little he could reduce his prescription he started lessening it and lessening it he didn't tell the doctor he was doing this he took the prescription the doctor gave him but he's on his own he started lessening it and he would see that he was fine till one day he was not taking any more medicine at all but he had but remember, he couldn't deny it because if he did and he stopped taking medicine, he would blow up. So he couldn't just stop doing his medicine. He needed the medicine till he could build up his faith to where the point was he got enough revelation and got real faith downloaded and filled up with until it started started. <laughs> The results. He said the better example is a girl at his church was a brand new Christian. She went to another church and somebody prophesied to her, you're healed. You don't have to take your medicine anymore. I think it was for diabetes. And that's serious. For diabetes, she needed that medicine. But she went home and, oh, I got faith and, oh, I'm healed. And, and she kept confessing and she ended up in the hospital and her brother was there and her father and them. Oh, and they said, oh, but she had such great faith. Oh, but she had such great faith, but she died. He said that wasn't that wasn't faith. He said, now that would be like what Sharon was saying. It's mental ascent. She believed it, she wanted it, but it wasn't revealed to her. It wasn't really revealed in understanding faith. And so she died confessing and believing the word of God and, and believing what the man said, but God didn't use that man to tell her that. She didn't know. And she needed to stay and believe her pastor, but she went over there. And didn't know, and she died. And then her brothers and them just kept saying, oh, but she had great faith. But that was not faith. Amen. So there's there's a difference between the mental ascent and the faith with Rick Amen. Renner and the girl. Thank you. Okay. That's great. Um, I was just going to say, uh, to, uh, to add on to what Chris and Luis said, um, you, you could have somebody prophesy over you. You could be at the top of this ramp right as a skateboarder and um 
somebody can prophesy to you, you're going to make that jump right there. You're going to go down this thing. You're going to look awesome making that jump. Um, but if you don't have the training, which is similar to if you're not reading the word and you don't really have it in you like you should, or you don't have enough of it, you're going to go down that ramp and you're going to die <laughs> or you're going to, you're going to face plant or mess yourself up. So um, that's a presumption <laughs> right there in its most extreme form, I guess. But yeah, it really does come down to just having that. It's It's got to be built that faith, like, just like what Chris said, I mean, you got to be in the word. It's I like, like, I like some practice. I like something that, I like something that Marilyn Hickey says. She said, it's, it's, it's important to read the word, but it's also important to understand that the word reads you. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's a good one. Yeah. I, like that. I, I heard a little bit of Mark Hankins yesterday and he was saying too often believers are like, I've already, I've already heard that. And we don't have, to, we don't water the word that we've heard with more mm-hmm. of the same thing. So mm-hmm. that that's very important. Oh, yeah. that. <laughs> what, one more, one more funny thing is that uh, uh, one huge presumption is that the choir, you know, how there's always that saying, yeah, preaching. I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You know what? I've been in choirs. Choirs yeah. need preaching. Okay. <laughs> choirs need yeah, preaching. True. Okay. So when you say, oh, you yeah. preach it to the choir, yeah, we need it. I guarantee you. <laughs> you want to get some word songs in your mouth? Go look up David Ingalls. He's, you go, like, there you go. In his, he's in his 80s. And oh my goodness, there are fake songs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I believe. We are at 1145, and I think it's um, time to wrap this up, unless anybody's got anything else to share. Um, But who wants to pray us out? I see Christine. (laughs) Please pray us out. All right. Well, I will say one thing before I begin to pray is that what has always worked for me is, yes, you have to be in the word. But then take the scripture the Holy Spirit points out to you, go into your prayer closet, meditate, pray in the Holy Ghost until it becomes alive in you. Because until it does, you don't have that scripture. It's floating around in your head, but it is not alive in your spirit, man. So mutter over it and pray in the Holy Ghost till you fire and you have it. So. Father, I just praise you and I thank you, Lord God, that we have had an awesome day today, that you are teaching us beyond belief, Father God, to speak with power and authority and to put our faith and our trust in you and in your spirit that is within us, that we can accomplish mighty things, Lord, with the word that is filled with the power of your spirit. It's the word and the spirit in agreement, Father God, equal, cohabitation together the word with spirit life breathing into that word and causing it to have force and authority and we just praise you father god that we will go out walking and talking in the power of the christ most high and we just praise you and thank you lord for a great week for each and every one of us father blessings beyond blessings beyond blessings to everyone who has faithfully served today in jesus name Amen. 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 Amen.